episode, we look at the pros and cons of two different types of learning environments. The first is a learning management system. This is also known as a virtual learning environment. And this is very much a centralised, secure environment that can only be accessed by students and staff from the university using a login. The second is a free, open access environment. These include Web2 technologies, mobile technologies and so forth, and these can be used by anyone. In this episode, we look at the key benefits of using each of these, and we also offer some key considerations that you need to bear in mind when using these technologies. There are things which a learning management system does, particularly around guaranteed flows of information to and from students and uh, the handling of assignments, for example, which no kind of standalone software can do as well. It has that authentication, it has that those uh, protected walls, uh, which provide uh, an environment which is safe enough for a student to feel like they can actually um, post work, be identified uh, without any pressure from the public. It has the um, uh, statistical analysis to assess participation. Previously, I had to go through myself and tick off when people were logging on. However, this provides a bit more of a holistic uh, learning experience. Um, with Blackboard, I can, I can go and see people who know Blackboard. And so there's a certain amount of support that I'm not sure I would get with something I was just choosing for myself. A blackboard, of course, you, you pay you pay a license for it. Uh, it's clearly not free, um, and often is the case that you've got to have people in your institution supporting the technology. You know, a system that that uh, I might not be familiar with, or I might not like, I might not feel comfortable using. A learning management system is, at the end of the day, a very artificial piece of software. It gathers together into one little box a lot of facilities that you can find and use online in a, in a normal way. The ability to collaborate and innovate is much stronger now than it was before pre-existing Web2 collaboration technologies. This is stuff that I can implement easily and quickly myself. It's our students are already familiar with. And so if I can package that as part of the online learning experience, I usually find that the transition is much smoother and it's a more lively experience. It's engaging with students in spaces that they feel comfortable in and are already using uh, <coughs> has to bring some kind of benefits. We are the generation that kind of grew on internet with Facebook, with YouTube, with MySpace. I think we're really used to the structure of all these websites and how they all work. There is a huge cloud of computing possibilities out there that don't have to go through a university system. That's fine. That's great to take those opportunities, particularly for communication. The difficulty comes when you start to engage in assessment and when you have things that have to be trapped by the university, that have to be kept as a record, that have to be there in case there's a dispute. Even if your software is free, you might still find there's a, there is a hidden cost to running it and do, running it properly. Staff uh, will need to understand that, that what is um, seen as being innovative um, today in a year's time won't be. How we broker and work with external Web2 environments um, to allow our universities to interface readily to the digital world of the population. Is to blend together the basics of what you would do with a learning management system and the critical use at the right time and place in our curriculum of the, the real software which makes the internet work. I go back to the idea of an environment that's a safe, structured environment which has lots of scope for creativity and for, for options within it. So we throw wikis, blogging, uh, online conferences, the use of real-time video interaction into the mix but we don't just rely on the LMS. We can't afford to continue to develop and shift our technology at the rate that a company like Google can, for example. Um, we're far better to interface with what they're developing.